All right. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for coming. We'll get underway, and I will start with an acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge and show our respect to the custodians of the land on which we gather today. We recognise the continued deep spiritual attachment and relationship of Aboriginal peoples to this country and commit ourselves to the ongoing journey of reconciliation. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we are on, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, and pay our respects to their elders, both past, present and emerging. I know, I think I know everyone here, but in case you don't know me, my name is Teresa Woolwich and I'm the head of the amazing group of young men that we have in year 12. Before I start, I'll ask Mrs. Miana Angove to come and talk to you regarding some important dates. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mrs. Woolwich. I've got a dash between um, all the different year groups, so I've asked to come on first just so I can have a bit of a chat with you. Um, this year, we will be moving pretty well into sector, and most of you or all of you would have uh, a login to sector so you can actually see what's happening uh, with your son's academic uh, journey. So sector is the place where all of the information goes, notices, timetables, uh, your reports, your son's reports, any assessments that are coming up so you can keep track of the assessments and let them know when things are happening because sometimes the boys um, lose track of the dates and it's really good when you have that partnership with a parent who's able to say, hey, I, I realise you've got, I think you've got an assessment coming up or a test coming up. All of that is visible in sector. The homework will be visible in sector also. The reason why we've done this is because we have um, a commitment to uh, including you as part of uh, the, the learning journey for your sons. And year 12 is an important year and there's lots happening. In fact, everything pretty much is done. Uh, all the main tuition is done by the end of term three. So the end of September. And I know that there are some boys who've already marked in their diaries that date to say we are done at this point. And then after that, boys will be coming back and doing exams if they're on an ATAR halfway, and then there'll be uh, graduation and then there will be those farewells. So, the three terms will go quickly. For some of you, not quickly enough, but it'll go quickly. And for those of you who've had the experience of boys coming through before, you know that there are certain points of tension and those points of tension are really around getting assessments done and things like that. So sector is that place where you go to to find out what's going on. And if you've got any questions, you can actually uh, get in, you, you can get some clarity and, uh, and you can write to your class teacher and email them and just let them know. So today I sent out a flyer for those of you who haven't connected yet, all the information is there. And if you forget your username, your password, you can just drop me a line or give me a call and I'll help you out with that. So it's a fairly simple process to get you reinstated um, and we'll be able to give you that access. The other thing I wanted to talk about was that there are some important dates coming up this term. This term, we're going to have a parent-teacher consultation before the end of term one for our year 11s and 12s. And the reason why we're doing that is so that we can capture early any issues that your sons might be having in classes. You'll be able to have the conversations with teachers. Prior to that consultation, you'll get an interim report. So that'll come out in around about the end of week seven, and then you'll be able to make some bookings with your teachers to have uh, have a chat. The, reason, the other reason why we're doing it for the eight or for, or for all students is that after the 30th of March, the enrolments are locked with the school curriculum and standards authorities, and there's no change. So it's pretty important that we make sure that everybody is, is in the right place, on the right pathway and doing the right thing. A part of my role is to uh, oversee any reviews of students as they work through. For the most part, students who are on track and doing okay and doing really doing the right thing, I, I tend to leave them alone. But there are some students who may not be doing too well in one or more subjects, and I will call them in for a chat, and in some cases I will call you in as well just so that we are all on the same page about what's happening. Teachers inform me through a target review through sector. They let me know when they've got concerns and what I do is I follow that up with the student. And it might just be 
uh, the student is having a little bit of a wobble and, and uh, something has happened, there's been some event that's happened in their life, or there might have been um, some sporting event that's taken up a lot of their time. As long as I get some clarity around that and know how things are moving forward, then that's, that's going to work for us. So that would be part of my job, mainly in term one, just making sure that everyone's on the right track. From what I can gather, and I've had a number of students come in to ask me about subject changes already, from what I can gather, people have started well. The boys have started as they intend to finish, and they know that we are, and when I say we, I'm talking about Teresa and the, and the form teachers, we are looking out for them. It's going to be a really great year for them, and we're really looking forward to journeying with them as they finish up. And as much as possible, I will help them with their academic pursuits. So if you've got any questions at all, any concerns, please give me a call, drop me a line, and I'll follow up with you. Have a wonderful year with your sons. It's going to be beautiful. I'll tell you what, that graduation ceremony is absolutely magical, and, and I really look forward to seeing you there. They are on sector. They will be on sector. So there'll be some dates on the splash page that will come up. And uh, there's also a calendar that's available as well. So all of those dates will be there. And I know it, when you're busy, it's hard to keep track and things tend to um, crop up really quickly. But we will be communicating with you and letting you know everything, either by email or those notices. Okay. So thanks very much. Thanks, Teresa, for the opportunity and have a great year with your sons. Thanks, Liana. I had a signal that um, that someone you would like to meet uh, because he will be involved with your sons during the year. Thanks, Teresa. Hello, everybody. Um, just quickly, welcome and uh, fantastic to see you here for the, for the last bit of the journey. I'm just going to introduce you quickly to Simon Harvey, who's the incoming principal from Term 2. Thanks, Teresa. Um, uh, it's lovely of Teresa to say that there's someone here that you'd like to meet. I'm hoping so, but um, well, I'd add my welcome too. But um, of course, you've been here longer than I have, um, and I don't start till term two, but really looking forward to it. And it's a real privilege, I know, uh, coming in the end of term three, early term four, when when your young men are graduating from Mazenod College, and I get to um, to be the lucky one to to acknowledge that and celebrate that with you. But I hope your journey to date has been wonderful and, and the remaining time in this marathon of secondary school goes even better and the, and the wonderful occasion of year 12 and year 12 graduation goes so well for you. And I'm very much looking to be a part, uh, looking forward to being a part of that with you. So thank you very much, Teresa and Andrew as well. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. What I thought I would start with is I asked the boys to reflect back on their successes over the years and how far they actually have come because they've done some amazing things and they've grown into amazing young men. And hopefully we will have a look at where they started. Any of you might remember the hours spent to do it?
We did have some boys join us a bit later than year seven. All right. And the reason I asked them to do that is this year, there are some times that they're going to be challenging, but we want them to celebrate times as well. We want them to look back and think, I have had a good five, six years here at the school. So the year 12 team, your boys have probably told you they're form teachers. So we have uh, some experienced form teachers who have been at the school and some new staff join us. As well, we have Kylie Eaton, who's our careers counsellor, and she spoke to the boys this morning. And we have uh, Lauren Nelson, who does vet and workplace learning. And we also have James Rogerson. He's our senior school psychologist who joined us last year. So we want the boys to know that there is a support network there for them. I asked them to do a reflection last week on how they felt now, what support system they had when things got tough and get them to actually think about who they can go to. And I know sometimes as a parent myself, having had three adolescent boys, I'm not the one sometimes that they want to talk to. And that's okay. It was a bit hard at first not to take it personally, but as long as they have a network of people that they can turn to if they need some help during the year. So you probably are all aware, but it is a year of mixed emotions, a year of celebrations, and for a lot of them, it's a year of sometimes some sadness. So a couple of the boys reflected that they're actually a bit sad that it's their last year. They get excited as they get closer to the finish, but they get nervous because it's a safe space here and out there's a big wide world. They don't know sometimes what they're going to do. There's a pressure of exams, um, balancing work, sporting commitments with their schoolwork. I don't know if the boys told you, they probably don't because most of them don't share a lot with their parents, but we had a we had Lee Spur present to them uh, last week. And for those of you that are Dockers fans like me, you'll know he played over 100 games for the Dockers. But the important message he had for them was, well, three takeaways. And I debriefed with the boys after and they some takeaways that they found were don't compare yourself to others. You know, don't say, yeah, I did this. I got this mark, but he got better. If this is your best, then that's what you should be happy with. He said to them, we all lie to ourselves. We all say, I'll do that next week. I'll go to the gym next week. I'll do an extra 5Ks next week. And he said that when he stopped lying to himself and actually said, well, I'm not really doing enough, he kind of could set some goals. Um, so he gave them those takeaway messages. He talked a lot about his failure, how he coped with being dropped from the team um, in quite an unceremonious way. Um, so talk to them about how to pick yourself up, how to deal with those lows as well as the highs. Celebrate the highs and deal with the lows. So a lot of what we try and do this year is celebration but also skills for life, really, because life is ups and downs, as we all know. So. They're developing a sense of who they are. And I feel very privileged to have seen them at that age and now to see them now. They really are amazing young men. They do want independence, but they also want help. And sometimes they don't realise that. They've got to navigate what it's like to, you know, leading to a workplace. Um, they've got to develop views. Uh, they'll be in voting age soon. Many of them are driving. They'll be of legal age. They're also the leaders in school. So we have expectations of them as the leaders in the school. The entire student, year 12 student body are leaders. And we've told them that whether they've got a badge or not, the younger boys look up to them. So we do have expectations for them because they do set the tone um, of the school. So some of them may have come home and said, Mrs. Bullich said, I need a haircut now. Need to do this and that. So um, they've been fantastic. And I had a look today and they are all um, onto that. Communication, we really push with them. I can't help them, we can't help them unless they talk, unless they tell me. 
But having said that, you might be the people to pick up that something is not quite right. So please let me know. And I do have covert ways of getting them to speak without letting them know that you've emailed me or called me or anything like that. So if you are worried, just contact me. Um, Behaviour and uniform, we do expect them to look presentable and set a really high standard of behaviour, which they are doing. And they have settled really well into the first week and they are probably one of the most cohesive groups I've seen come through in that I've seen tables of boys of different friendship groups playing Jenga or playing chess and just enjoying each other's company, which is a really good social skill for them. So one of the aims for me in year 12, so we did for a couple more expectations, punctuality, driving to school. So a little bit of a different system this year. They're not handing in their keys. So last year they were handing in their keys and then, well, they were supposed to hand in their keys and then pick them up at the end of the day. We're giving them a trust system because uh, many years ago I went to a PD and the presenter was awesome and said, if you put your trust here, they'll meet you. And if you put your trust there, they'll meet you. So we've put our trust here and we've said to them, our trust is here. that You will not leave the school grounds until at least 10, 15 minutes after the bell's gone to avoid congestion and protect them. And that you will not, um, I guess, take advantage of the fact that you've got your keys on you. And they've been great. They really have been great. Um, bus travel, we do expect them to be a little bit proactive as our senior students um, in that regard. Now, the pastoral care program is designed not only to help them develop academic success in whatever pathway they have, but it, it's really designed to give them the skills to move into adulthood and into the world. So we introduced financial literacy last year, Money Matters. Um, for those of you that know Thomas Sankey, he's a has not old boy, and he came and taught the boys how to set up a spreadsheet, to budget, use three bank accounts, one for saving, one that your pay goes in, one for bills, and then one for spending. And that they really responded well. So that's happening again. We've got a um, presentation for them on study skills and organisational habits. Even if they're non ATAR, they still need to be organised. And that's through Learning Fundamentals. Dr. Jane Genovese will be doing that. We've got a uh, presentation Zero to Hero, do a presentation on Party Safe in Term 3, when a lot of the boys are looking towards where am I going to go for leavers and what's going to happen after the ball and who's got a party on and all of that. So really it's skills that they're going to need when they get out there. The Keeping Safe Child Protection Curriculum is also embedded into the Pastoral Care Program as it is um, every year. So we have um, Respectful Relationships presentation for them coming up in March. And that's really hoping to give them some skills on how do I navigate this friendship thing because it's changing all the time. And it'll change next year when suddenly my group of friends aren't at the same place as I am. And how do I navigate that? How do I be respectful to other people? How do I not get into the trap of putting people into stereotypes? Also, we delve into mental health with them as well. And that is a, a constant sort of message that we send to the boys because it's it's an important one. So their well-being is one that we look at all the time over the course of the year. Coming up to the ball, we have Chadwick's come out and teach them how to be a young gentleman to their guests for the evening. So they get those sort of skills as well. Year 12 events, some big ones this year, big ones. So semester one exams and workplace starts week five, week six of term two. There's a Kairos retreat, and then we have the ball on Thursday, the 29th of June. So I have heard some boys talk already about the ball and limousines and all of that. So um, anyone that says it's only the girls that start talking early, no, the boys do it as well. So some of you have been through that journey, and for some of you, it's a really nice one to look forward to um, in June. The farewell um, events are in October. So pretty much by the 21st of October, 
the boys have wrapped up at school in terms of events. So that's one of the pressures that the boys are feeling. And that's one of the things that came out in their reflection. It's a short time and it really is. So there'll be um, some concerns, some worries, and that might come out in different ways in their behaviour, which you've probably already seen. Some boys will tell you, others will just be really quiet. Others might slam the door and say, I don't want to talk to you. It's all normal. It's all part of adolescence. It's part of them working out who I am and where do I actually fit into this big wide world? And also, what is there in the future for me? So that's one of the things that I have found that we really need to work on with the boys is that sense of hope. There is hope. It's not about your final mark. You are not your mark. And I often say to the boys, I don't look at you and see a mark or an apprenticeship or a job. I see you. And so that's a really important message that I ask the whole team to really put forward to the boys. So the year 12 form teachers will get to know the boys um, and work with them over the year on lots of little things that come up and sometimes some big things as well. I'll just go back to that one, character strengths. Didn't mention character strengths. Um, this is really about getting the boys to realise what qualities they have, what great qualities they have. Because often I'll say to the year 12s, what do you think your biggest strength is? And they'll say nothing. I don't have one. But they all do. So it's getting them to realise that, getting them to celebrate those strengths, but also use those strengths to get them through those bumps in the road. Um, so character strengths is a big part of it. So really what I wanted to, the message I wanted to get across to you tonight is a little bit less formal um, because I'd love to hear from you and have questions, but it is we will do our very best to support them in their well-being, in their academic success, in their workplace success, but also to get them to celebrate whatever many years they've spent at the college and for many of them it's six years because it has been a journey for some of them that has been, that has had highs and lows as life does. Um, but they have come so far and um, they are starting to realise they're the older boys and it, it's almost like a light switch when they realise, hang on, I am actually year 12, I'm at the top in the senior block. I have, some of them said to me today, it's so good we have microwaves and toasters and it's so good and... So they're, they're starting to realise, yeah, kind of almost made it, year 12. Um, but that they're still, you know, 17, 18. So there's still a lot of growing to do. So please keep the communication coming with us and so that we can help them in any way that we possibly can. And I really look forward to sending them off at the end of the year and finish their years here in the same way that I welcomed them in year seven. So please, any questions at all? It's graduation. Graduation in terms of the, yeah, 21st of October, Saturday. So the Friday before that is the farewell assembly. So that's a beautiful assembly here at the college. Some of you will have already been through that. Uh, bring the tissues. Um, definitely bring the tissues. And then the next night is the um, valedictory dinner at the Hyatt this year. The ball is at the Hyatt as well, and that's on June the 29th, uh, Thursday, and that's the last day of term two. So they're the kind of big events in year 12, but they come up, they come up very, very quickly. Is there anything else? Yes. Set us out a bit of info about Yes, definitely, definitely. Yes. Usually Andrew will send you a letter about the afters um, and I certainly will send you a letter. He includes the expectations. The boys will also be spoken to by me about um, expectations. I can hand on heart say last year, they were absolutely brilliant. Yeah. 
And they are also responsible for their partners and their guests' behaviour rather. So they take that on board. Um, they, they really want to celebrate the night and have a good night. Um, but yes, you'll get a letter from the principal about um, afters. If you have any concerns at all, speak to me closer to the time. Yeah. We, the party safe presentation that we give them also in term three talks about looking after each other when they're getting towards the leavers stage and you know the big final party stage. Um, so it's really about don't follow the others, look after yourself and look after your mates. So they do get that message quite a bit as we go through the year. Um, if you went, I'm not sure if you went to the career session, but Carly does um, careers with them. She, they had one this morning where hopefully some of them have come home and said to you, I'm on a www.careers.com.au. No, probably not. Okay, so there, there is a website that has a lot of information for them. And there is also a school careers um, page where there's jobs that go up all the time and apprenticeships. So the boys were told that this morning, keep looking, keep looking every day. There's new jobs, there's apprenticeships, there's um, courses, there's TAFE, there's everything. So they've got access to a lot of information in regards to careers um, because sometimes they think they know what they want to do and then suddenly they have a look and think, oh, maybe I'll do go down this path. Uh, on there is also the open days for all the unis. So if they think, think they might be uni bound at some point, the open days are a great place to start because they have uh, second and third year students in most of the courses speaking to the boys as well. So they have a careers lesson probably every two to three weeks and they will go through, uh, revise how to write a resume, how to apply for a job, all of those things that they'll need next year in whatever they're doing. Even if they're uni-bound, most of them are going to have to apply for some things. Um, what do I do with my money? What do I do with a tax file number? What is a tax file number? All of those things that we try and tell them. So that happens through the year as well. Yes. Hey, we went yes. to the, but she said that the students actually get the login. Yes. So that's career, that parents can basically, I think you can, yes. You can, yeah, so they get the login for that careers page and anyone can use it. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a generic login. Okay, so it's no, it's not specific. It's a generic login for all the students. So if you do have other um, children that would like to look as well for jobs, go for it. Yeah, it's open slather really and it has a lot of information but the careers department page also has a lot of information seek send them jobs uh, TAFE send them apprenticeships companies send them a, say we're looking for this apprentice around June if the boys are looking at apprenticeships they need to really be starting around May June it takes two or three months to kind of get through the process of apprenticeships so um yeah, but the careers people, you can contact them at any point if you'd like more info on that. Anything else? One more question. No, that's all right. That's... Um, so the boys have a graduation and then they come back to school for two weeks for exams. Is that right? Boys... Yeah, so they have the, the valedictory on the Saturday. So graduation mass on the Friday, valedictory on the Saturday, and then they come back for, well, that marks the end of the term. Um, not the end of the term. They come back for exams only, or they start workplace. Yeah. So what day do they actually finish for this? It depends on their, that is the final formal day of school is that Friday. So they only come back to sit exams. Otherwise, they start workplace or apprenticeships, whatever they're going to do. So that Friday, the 20th of October, that's pretty much the end. Yeah. So it's it's not long, really. And that worries a lot of boys, particularly as it starts to come into June, July. They get the ball done and then they realise, hang on, I've only got nine weeks left at Mazamod. And for some, that's, yay, I can't wait. 
And for others, it's, I can't wait, but I'm a little bit scared as well because I've been here for so long. And now I have to decide when to get up. You know, well, my boss will tell me when to get up or if you're going to uni, I have to rock up. No one's going to care if I don't rock up. No one's going to care if I don't hand anything in. Those kind of things. They're all little points of stress for the boys um, because we've told them what to do for six years. So adjusting to that, um, yeah, can be a stressful time for some of them. Yeah, so we can help them through that, definitely. Oh, closing date to change subjects, ATAR subjects, 30th of March. Yeah, but what we say to the boys is change as soon as you can because otherwise you've missed five or six weeks of whatever subject you're going into. So we have had a couple of boys change this week. So really I would be encouraging them if they're not sure they're in the right units, to really look at it in the next week or so, make an appointment with Liana and change as soon as possible. So SCARSA won't accept any more after the 29th or 30th of March, but the earlier you do it, the better, so that you're not missing five or six weeks of another um, subject. And do the maths. So um the question, just in case anyone else um has the same question, is can you uh do maths methods and apps together? I'm not really sure. Um, the person to contact, actually, he, he's doing a presentation, is John Donaghy. He's down in one of the rooms. He would know. They never used to allow it, but they may have um, changed. Yeah, this in the same way that they changed uh, year 11, you can do literature and English now, so, which used to be years ago, and then they stopped it, and now they brought it back, yeah. Any, anything else that I've covered? There's probably, there will be questions. Please just call or please just email at any time um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I do teach uh, year 12 chemistry, but I do know the boys from all the years they've been here. So um, yeah, please just communicate. And as I said, it's a privilege to have them again. It's been lovely. And they are so respectful. I, there isn't one boy that walks past me that doesn't say good morning or hello or how was your weekend or good afternoon, miss. So um, they're a credit to you. Well done. All right. There's, yes. Can I just tell you, I think we're the teachers. Oh, back. thank you, Lisa. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, it's, it's, it's my privilege. They are amazing. The thing is they don't realise it sometimes and that's my job. All right, well, thank you. And thank you for coming out and please keep in touch.